Chapter 9 discusses market segmentation and product positioning. These are probably two of the most important topics uh, that, you will, that we will discuss in the Principles of Marketing class. And so if you've read this chapter and casually read it, my recommendation to you is to first go back and read it very carefully. Market segmentation and positioning are two of the most important ideas. So let's start with market segmentation. In the 60 years since one of those Smiths first pioneered the idea of marketing concept, it's become one of the most dominant com concepts in marketing. It's, uh, it's something that every business should be exposed to. And what we're going to talk about is the definition of history, the basis for segmentation, approaches to segmentation, and then we'll look at an example of using different approaches to segmentation. What is marketing segmentation? Segmentation is defined as the process of disaggregating or aggregating prospective buyers into homogeneous groups of demand. That is, either starting with a giant market of people and breaking them into groups, or starting with one individual and then another individual and then another individual and aggregating them into groups. So either it's a bottom-up or a top-down approach, but at the end of the day, the goal in segmentation is to end up with homogeneous groups of demand. So what does homogeneous groups of demand mean? Well, it means that groups that have similar wants and needs. And of course, then this similarity in wants and needs should result in similarities in brands considered and purchased. Once again, segmentation is not simply breaking customers into groups. It is breaking customers into groups in a very specific way. That is breaking customers into homogeneous groups of demand. People with similar wants and needs. It's really based on the idea of viewing a larger heterogeneous market as a number of smaller homogeneous markets. And so it's based on this idea that if we take something like the market for fast food, it's made up of consumers who want all kinds of different things when they look for a fast food restaurant. They don't all want the same thing. Many want different things. For each group or segment then can be you know, the idea with that each group or, or segment then can be marketed to in a particular way in terms of the products offered, the communication strategy, the distribution strategy, and the pricing strategy. Well, market, as I said earlier, marketing segmentation was first described in the mid-50s, uh, but it really caught hold in the 60s and 70s uh, when it really became a means for companies to expand the sales of their products. Um, and, the nine, and, you know, and, and it's moved on and on since then, and so now, and, and so now in, in modern time, you, know, you go to the grocery store and you look at, I don't know, something like spaghetti sauce. There are 20 different brands of spaghetti sauce, and within each brand, there's probably five or six different offerings. And so at the end of the day, you might go to the grocery store and see 75 different product offerings just in the spaghetti sauce business. That's all due to the fact that people want to differentiate their products based on different wants and needs in the marketplace. Now, one of the questions about segmentation is, well, Jack, segmentation is great. We're going to break the market down into homogeneous groups of demand. But that's not the only way to do business. And the argument is, is, has been made that there are, in fact, three types of markets. Mass markets, where everybody wants the same thing. Individual markets or diffuse markets, where everybody wants something different. And then segment market, segmented markets where people ha uh, will have similar, groups of people will have similar wants and needs. So let's take a look at this. Let's start by discussing some examples of mass markets. Can you give me an example of a market where everybody wants the same thing? Now, this would have to be a market that would be relatively simple and relatively straightforward. So let's think about this for a second. How about water the market for water well there's all kinds of water right there's purified water there's spring water there is um, water that is um, uh, has added uh, uh, electrolytes or vitamins in it there are all all kinds of different waters and we know that every water is not the same and that people don't want the same things in waters because someone's willing to pay four dollars for a bottle of water and you and I both know that you can walk um, to the water fountain and get that same water for free. So water's not a good example. Let's come up with something maybe simpler. How about pencils? Well, no, not really, right? Because there's mechanical pencils, 
there's uh, regular pencils, there's colored pencils, there's pencils with different um, lead hardness in them. There's number two pencils, number three pencils, number four pencils. So pencils doesn't work. Well, let's go to the other end of the spectrum for a second. Let's look at individual markets where everybody wants something different. This would have to be something that's a very customized market. How about housing? Well, no, housing's not a good example because there are lots and lots of track homes. And in fact, here in Las Vegas, you'll notice that 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 some home builders build the same homes over and over and over again in just in different locations in the city. How about something like an automobile? Well, no, obviously not because um, uh, many autos are, are built exactly the same and many people want the same kinds of autos. As a matter of fact, last year, the uh, Ford Motor Company sold over 500,000 F-150 pickup trucks. All right, so, so here's the problem. The problem is there are virtually no mass markets and there are virtually no individual markets and that almost every market is segmented. And that's why the notion of segmentation is so important. Now, the idea here is that segments lead to target markets and those target markets then lead to marketing programs. So we identify homogeneous groups of demand that we then identify target markets and we then identify marketing programs to, to focus on reaching those segments by, by focusing on specific target markets. Now, your book does a very poor job of this, and in fact, most textbooks do, of the distinction between target markets and segments. And in fact, your book takes the position that target markets are simply selecting a segment and then marketing to it. That is absolutely wrong period. All right, so let's first walk through these two definitions and see if we can identify the difference between segments and target markets. A segment is a group of customers who um, have similar wants and needs, and these segments are identified in terms of wants and needs. All right, so a group of, a group of customers with similar wants and needs is a segment. A target market is a group of people at which a marketing program is aimed. All right, and so hence the name target market. Target for target, market for market, target market. Target markets are usually identified in terms of demographics and psychographics, and maybe more recently by database marketers and online marketers in terms of behaviors. But a target market is not the same as a segment. A target market is a group of people at which a marketing program is aimed. So an example of a target market might be college students. An example of a, of a segment might be a price sensitive fast food restaurant shoppers. They're very different in terms of how they're put together and they're very different in terms of how we use them. The, as an example, there are virtually no segments that are demographic in nature. If a, if, a, if, a, if a segment is demographic in nature, it means that everybody in that particular demographic group would have similar wants and needs. Uh, and I personally can't come up with any examples of this, but I'll show you the difference between this a little later on in, in, a, in a future lecture. The bottom line is you can't be everything to everybody and you can't appeal to everyone. And the solution then is to identify groups of customers with specific similar wants and needs and focus on satisfying them. That is to segment markets and then design specific marketing offerings to, to reach each of those segments. So why use segmentation? Well, simply put, segmentation allows marketers to adapt their marketing programs to the diversity that they find in the marketplace. Think about fast food restaurant goers. Some people are very interested in fast food restaurants. They're interested in the fast in fast food restaurants. Others might be very price sensitive. Others might be interested in something completely different in a fast food restaurant. But the bottom line is that I have to make sure that I have focused on a particular segment and that I have a product offering that meets their wants and needs. Here's an example. So I have segments one, two, three, and four here, and these could be any kind of segments that you would like. And the product offerings I have on the right-hand side here are different kinds of SUVs from Chevrolet. The Chevrolet Spark SUV, the Chevrolet Equinox, and the Chevrolet Traverse. And so the, and so the argument here is that 
Chevrolet has different kinds of SUVs because there are different segments. And so, so one product is geared towards a segment, and in terms of the Equinox, maybe there are two or three segments that they try to reach with that same particular product. And then maybe there's another segment that's the focus of the Chevrolet Traverse. This is the idea of matching product offerings or, um, to, to specific segments. This is, this is the idea of taking advantage of the diversity in the marketplace in terms of wants and needs and producing goods and services that best meet those wants and needs.